does this loss change how you either of you guys feel about the 49ers? If you would have told yourself 24 hours ago, the 49ers are going to lose this one by seven points, going to go down to the wire. Would you say that's acceptable? I understand that's how it works in Seattle. I think they can still do some damage in the NFL, in the NFC. Or would you now be like, you know what? That's exactly what I expected. This team is a complete pretender. Uh, Matt, you can go first and then Perry, you second. I mean, you know how I feel. I already said weeks ago that this team is not a real contender, that they'd have an outside shot at a wild card, and that was it. And that by kind of stringing everything along like this, you were actually hurting development for next year. And I, I completely stand by that. I think Lance should be playing right now. I don't think it does them any favors to make a wild card and lose in the wild card round. That's great. You make the playoffs. I think that maybe makes Kyle feel like he's doing his job a little better and secures his spot. But you're not playing for the future right now. That that's for sure. Um, I think that we know what Jimmy is, and Jimmy is imminently frustrating. You can see it on Kyle's face, you can see it in everybody's face. Everybody's just about done with him, but they feel like they have to run him out there. So this was not a surprise to me. I kind of expected them to lose going in today. By the way, um, it's just again, as I said before, they're consistently inconsistent, and this is just further proof of that. Harry, right, what do you think? Ripping off my Niners shirt. Looking at this from an unbiased approach, these Niners, if you told me that 24 hours ago, I would tell you right now they're pretenders because this game was absolutely must win. Absolutely. Now now you're separated by half a game with four other teams in the NFC. And this entire season has been a crapshoot. You look at the AFC, it's the exact same thing. There's like five teams separated by half a game. The NFC is the same thing. You needed to win this game. There was no excuse to lose this game against a terrible 3-8 and Seahawks team. I don't care who Russell Wilson is. I don't care who DK Metcalf is. They have been playing terribly. And you knew that. I knew that. They knew that. Drake, or not Drake Greenlaw, uh, Fred Warner and Debo Samuel side. you still have everything it takes to beat Seattle. Your defense was relatively healthy. Your offense was relatively healthy. You had everything it took to execute, and you didn't execute. Why? Because I don't think they were prepared. Kyle Shanahan, of course, is going to go on a press conference and say, yeah, we were prepared. What else is he going to say? He's not going to lie or tell the truth. They weren't prepared. That's how it came off to me. They were prepared for one half, maybe. But overall, they just didn't look – they didn't have that full energy. And it's like the moment an interception happens or a turnover happens, just just tanks. You see all the energy gets sucked out of them. And that's been the story of them all season. Inconsistent or consistently inconsistent. That's been their story. And I ripped this shirt off as an unbiased fan, and I tell you right now I think they're pretenders. I, I yeah, want to believe I, as a fan, I really do, because you see the good things, and it's like, man, they, they can do it, but they can't do it consistently, and you cannot win in the playoffs if you're not consistent. That is reality, yeah. and the Niners, I, uh, just, they can't I, do it. I don't feel like – I don't know if they were unprepared. I feel like, To me, this was, this was the trap game where it's like, we won three in a row. We're back on track, and they started feeling themselves again. And w- anytime they come in and they're not acutely under the microscope, under pressure – and they start feeling themselves, they come out and make these sloppy mistakes. And that's, uh, to me, that's, I mean, that does reflect on the coaching, but it also reflects on, I think, this year more than any other, a lack of leadership in the locker room. You don't have the Joe Staley's. You don't have the Richard Sherman's. You don't have the guys who are, like, who get really upset about sloppy football. It's a lot of young guys on this team. No Buckner, no Quan, and we can crap on Quan all he wants, but he was loved in that locker room. He, he was, was a leader, yeah. He was a leader. No yeah. Emmanuel Sanders. You just yep. lost almost everyone. And a that, lot of veteran true. presence out of the yeah. locker room for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, also I hung like, fat says perhaps the worst loss under Kyle Shanahan. No, I maintain the Super Bowl is the worst loss. That's always going to be his worst loss. Right, worst regular season, maybe. What do you think? No, we said that earlier though. We said Did that we? earlier when they got blown out against. Uh, Arizona with no Kyler Murray. Okay, that's yeah, that's right. Um, that's it's worse up there than though. This. It's maybe top five because get, nobody dude, expected them to lose. This getting, game. getting, getting, uh, getting shot out in a straight up duel with old Colt McCoy. That's way worse than this. Yep, another ten point lead that disappeared quick. That's tough. Um, then Cardinals yeah. Ace bro. So thinking about this, and I'm gonna wrap this up. I swear, the last three wins that we were feeling really good about. I think the only respectable win out of that is the Rams who went the whole month without winning a game before they beat Jacksonville today. Then they beat Jacksonville 30 to 10. Don't get me wrong. It's never easy winning an NFL game, but let's be honest. It's Jacksonville. And then they beat the Vikings last week by eight who just lost lost to the the winless lions. 
So maybe this team was pretending this whole time and winning these kind of gimme games. And then they come in with a tough game, which is always tough against Seattle. And they failed to get it done. Maybe we were lying to her. I mean, Matt, I know you were kind of saying for weeks, you don't believe them still. You'll believe them when they do it against someone real. Maybe I've been lying to myself saying this team has back on track. Again, when you take away the wins against the Rams, which it just seems like Kyle Shanahan bullies Sean McVay for his lunch money. When you take away that ramp, the Rams win, who have they beaten? That's over 500. Yeah, They beat the Lions. They beat the Eagles, neither of which are good teams. They beat the Vikings, who are under 500. You know, they beat the Jaguars, who are atrocious. Who, who are you beating? You're beating nobody. That's the problem. And you're now sitting here six and six. You lose against a three and eight, now four and eight Seattle team. Like, people really think this is a contending team? I don't know. They've lost, they've lost against every significant uh, playoff team this season. Exactly. The Cardinals yep. twice, Green Bay, the Colts. All, all very ugly. They're absolutely yep. very ugly. And then yeah, a loss so you, to Seattle thrown in there. Yeah, Two you, take away, you take away the McVay, the McVay Rams, which again, I think Kyle's won like what six in a row against him. Yeah. Like they just don't, they just don't beat any good teams. And so now we're looking at, I mean, what's good. I'm telling you, there's a reason why our old, our old boy isn't in here today talking about how he's going to get a Jersey from us for them making the playoffs. You yeah. can see it when they lose. It, it's very apparent. Yeah, and I'm just going to end on this. The lot, ton of people that were in my chat saying it's not Jimmy G's fault, they're not even on Twitter tonight. So I think yeah. that kind of says it for itself. But that's going to do it, guys. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Hit like, hit subscribe. Um, we're trying to reach 2,000 subscribers so we can give away a 49ers jersey. And we're getting pretty close. We're getting pretty close. So it could be you. Uh, Matt, Perry, thank you guys for joining. Unfortunately, we're recovering a loss, but hopefully next yeah. week it's a win. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Perry, again, thanks for joining us here. Any parting words real quick before I give us the send off? No, nah, guys, thanks for having me on. I'm glad I could uh, air my gripes and I'm glad we all kind of agree <laughs> that you know, yeah. we're all pretenders, you know, and uh, just Lance 2022. That's I exactly on that train. <laughs> Lance 2022. Those are my final words. Yeah, the one thing we're not pretending about is we love having you guys here each and every week. So thank you, as always, for joining us even in these tough times. It's on to Cincinnati. So until next time, go Niners.